I'd like to do a tutorial here on DNS and how to set it up properly for an Active Directory domain controller. And this is crucial because many times IT administrators will set this up incorrectly, which will either slow down their network or it will cause people to not be able to connect to their server or file shares. So it'll just take a couple of minutes and we'll start by right clicking on our network in the right hand corner and click open network and internet settings or the settings icon. Once we're in here, I'm going to click on Network and Sharing Center, and then I'll click on Change Adapter Settings. Choose the network card that's lit up, and right-click and go to Properties. Now, if you have multiple cards that are lit up, then you'll just want to choose the one that has the main IP address on it. The other ones don't matter as much. What I'm going to do now is go to my IP version 4, and I'm going to double-click on it. Now, if you're using IP version 4 and not using IP version 6, don't uncheck IP version 6 on your domain controller. It'll actually make more problems for you on your domain controller by unchecking it. It may even make it so people can no longer connect to you. So leave that connected. Now, you can certainly uncheck on your regular servers or on your PCs if you're just not using IP version 6, but leave it on here. Let's take a look at my IPv4 settings. Now, I've got my IP address is 192.168.21.110, and that is unique to me. It doesn't mean that yours should be set to that. It's whatever it's going to be for your network. And I'm not going to do a TCP IP tutorial here. I'm just going to do a DNS one. So I'm going to assume that you understand how that all works. The next part has to do with the DNS, and this is really what we're going to talk about here. We have a preferred DNS server and an alternate DNS server. And this is where a lot of IT administrators make a mistake. They, they will go in and put in a public address like that. That's a Google DNS server. We don't want that. And that's because if you put in a public DNS server, you're not going to be able to resolve anything inside your network, such as if you have multiple domain controllers, you won't be able to replicate properly because it won't be able to find it. It'll also make it difficult to find other servers or other inside resources. You don't want to do that. You want to put in the IP address that you see under the IP address setting under use the following IP address. Now, another acceptable thing would be, and this happens when you install a brand new domain controller, is it will go in and add in 127.0.0.1. Now that's certainly fine also. This is called a loopback address and it basically just points right back to 21.110 in my case or whatever your IP address is on your server. So don't worry about that being in there. That works the exact same way. Another mistake I see a lot of administrators make is they'll use the alternate DNS server to go to a public DNS server. And don't do that either. And the reason for that is if you have a slow Active Directory domain controller, the problem is that whichever DNS server responds first is going to win. So if you're looking for a resource inside your network and your server is slow, then it's going to try to find it outside at Google's DNS, 8.8.8.8. So the issue with that is going to be that Google doesn't know anything about your inside network. And that request for that resource or file share or whatever it is is going to fail. So don't do it. Now, if you have multiple domain controllers, you can certainly put in as a secondary one of your other domain controllers. So you can do that. Now, if you have more than two domain controllers and you click on advanced, you can certainly add those all here, but it's not really that necessary. And I'll show you why when we get into DNS manager. So two DNS servers is fine for redundancy. That will work great. Now what we're gonna do is take a look in DNS manager and I'll show you how to set that up properly for DNS. I'm in the server manager dashboard. I'm going to go to tools and go to DNS. Now inside DNS, what I want to do is I want to right click on the server and I want to go to properties. And inside properties, there's a couple of things we want to do. The first thing has to do with interfaces. If you're not using IP version 6, as I mentioned earlier, leave the box checked for IP version 6, but you can uncheck the IP address here. So instead of just having all IP addresses for which the server will listen on, only listen on the one IP address in TCP IP version 4 if that's what you're using inside, as most people are. If you are using IP version 6 inside, then that's fine. Go ahead and, and choose the all IP addresses or choose the IP version 6 manually. Now, if you have a lot of IP addresses in here because you have a lot of network cards, uncheck every one of them with the exception of your main IP address. And the reason for that 
is because let's say you have multiple VLANs and you've got your server connected to more than one subnet, then it's possible that somebody on VLAN one, which is on the 192.168.21 network, will get a response when trying to get to your server on the 172.16 network. And that'll cause all kinds of problems. So you just want to have the box checked for your main IP address. If we go to forwarders, this is where things get interesting. This is where you want to have your public DNS servers. So what will happen is, is any requests that come in for an internal resource, the server will say, hey, I know where that is. It's right here. But if it says, hey, I want to go to CNN.com or some other website, then it uses this forwarders tab to do it. So it will say, hey, I don't have that website here go off to this public DNS server and tell me where that is so I can serve that up to my client. So this is where you want to have those public DNS servers. So the big question is, is what do you put in there? Well, you can put in a national DNS server such as uh, Google is here, 8.8.8.8. You could also put in whatever your ISP tells you. Your ISP will actually tell you what DNS servers they use. So which one should you use? Well, what I do is I like to pull up a command prompt and I like to do a trace route to each one of these two servers or whatever servers I'm considering using. And whichever one responds the quickest with the least amount of hops is going to win. So I'll type in trace route or trace RT minus D because we don't need it to resolve all of the names to IP addresses while it's doing this. It just takes longer. And then I'm going to put in 8.8.8.8. So this is going to basically do a hop count and it will find its way to that Google DNS server. And it tells me how fast it is. And it was 10 hops and we can see the milliseconds weren't too bad. Now I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm going to put in 4.2.2.2. And so far, it looks like my 4.2.2.2 is going a little bit faster. But then at the very end, the 19 milliseconds on the last two actually took a longer time. So if I add up all these milliseconds, I see it's the same amount of hops. So if there were less hops, I'd be okay with, with a higher millisecond count. But because it's the same amount of hops, both 10, I'm going to go with whichever has the lower count. So I'm going to go back here. I'm going to take my 8888, and I'm going to click up. And now it is on top. If I want to add any additional ones, like 4.4.4.4, for instance, I can do that. And then I can put that into whatever order I want. Now, that's not an actual DNS server, so I'll take that out. So we have 8.8.8.8 because it responds faster, and 4.2.2.2 as a backup forwarder for any public requests, such as requests for websites. All right, I'll click OK on that. Now that's all set. And the last thing I want to show you is why it is you don't need to put in every single DNS server address into your TCP IP DNS settings. So for instance, I'm going to right click on my techpub.us. So we can see this is my Active Directory one because I have my MSDCS, which is the Active Directory Replication Zone, is sitting here. So I know this is my Active Directory domain. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to go to Properties. And then we're going to go to Name Servers. So what this is going to do is it's going to give me a list of all the name servers I have. Now, in my case, I said I had a 111 domain, uh, domain controller. I don't. I was just saying that, for example. So it's going to list all of the different domain controllers that uh, are installed. And that's why you don't need to put every single DNS server inside your TCP IP version for uh, settings that was shown at the beginning of the video. And it's going to replicate the Active Directory domain database to all of those other ones, assuming that they're also global catalogs, which is a copy of Active Directory that automatically gets set up when you promote a server to be a domain controller. So that is how you properly set up DNS and name servers and your network interface card in an Active Directory domain controller on both 2019 as well as 2016. And it also works on older servers like 2012, 2008, etc.